This is part 9 of my series of 10 videos introducing drumming to those of you who've never done it before and want to get a start. We've looked at playing a bunch of different eighth note beats with some different bass drum patterns. We've looked at playing a few different fills. I've shown you some ideas about how to start improvising, how to count, very importantly, four bar phrases and how to punctuate them with a crash. Today I'm going to look at something a little bit different, how to be quiet. I don't know if there's some sort of fancy schmancy Italian term for this, but it's what I call stop time. It's when the band hits an accent and then all stop playing together. Maybe one instrumentalist and the singer keep going and there's a big dramatic gap in the dynamics. And then the band comes crashing back in, hopefully all at the same time, and that's what I want to talk about and show you today. I think this is a good thing to get to grips with at a fairly early stage, because it's about how you manifest the groove and the feel of the song within yourself, or wherever it comes from. I actually, I think maybe it sort of emanates from the earth and flows up through your chair, into your bum and up your spine. Or maybe it comes from the, the sky and beams into your head like a sort of Philip K. Dick thing. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just within your body. But um, we want to be able to keep a really good sense of groove and times when we have to actually stop playing are a great way to become aware of that because if you stop playing and your mind does wander off, you're not going to come back in with a good sense of groove and you're not going to help the band sound amazing, which is basically what your job is as a drummer. So let's have a quick demo of what I mean. I'm going to play a four bar phrase. The first three bars are going to be groove. I'm going to stop on the one of bar number four and then come back in on the first note or the first quarter note of the new four bar phrase. So basically we're going to be out for four quarter notes worth. Something like this. One, two, three, stop. One, two, three, stop. Two, three, stop. One, two, three, Ooh, that worked. I'm always relieved. So that was your basic stop time. And in most cases, not always, a stop will be kind of a tight, sharp thing. So you might play snare and hi-hat, flam on the snare, flam and bass, hi-hat, snare and bass, choke the cymbal like that with the bass or a snare. Depends what fits the song. But in the majority of cases, or more often than not, I would say, you're going to kill it dead. Um, you might do it like that, and I, I can't muffle this electric drum thing, but otherwise you might muffle your toms and get a boom, kind of tight sound. Uh, on the occasion that you have a stop where it keeps going, uh, that might be indicated by like a piano or a guitar ringing on, so then you'd know maybe not to uh, choke the cymbal, not to play a sharp sound. Maybe you play the, the ding. So you need to know what's appropriate. But again, I'll reiterate, mostly you'll do a dead stop. Now, to get used to doing this, if you've not done this before, we're going to first start doing it with one bar of groove. And I'm going to not bother with the crash, but we're going to play whatever beat you fancy, snare on two and four, standard rock beat, one and two and three and four. And we're going to stop two, three. Four. Now here's the important thing, three and four and stop, two, three, four, is to count the gap, three and four and stop, two, three, four, one, two and three and four and stop. It's not a very difficult thing to do, but we want to develop that sense of time and groove that continues even while we're not playing anything. Your groove needs to be as good as it is when you're playing, even when you're being silent. Once you've got the hang of playing the stop on its own, we'll put it into a four bar phrase. So again, it's three bars of playing a groove and the stop for one bar, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Two, and two, and three, and four, and three. Two, and three, and four, and stop. Two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and two. Two, and three, and four, and three. Two, and three, and four, and stop. Two, three, four. One. 
that a little bit it won't take you very long to get the hang of the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a click on it and we can use that to really help us to develop some accuracy so let's get that up I'm going to put the metronome on 100 beats per minute one two three four one two and three and four and two two and three and four and three two and three and four and stop two three four one, two and three and four and two, two and three and four and three, two and three and four and stop, two, three, four. One, two and three and four and two, two and three and four and three, two and three and four and stop, two, three, four. One, two and three and four and two, two and three and four and three, two and three and four and stop. So far, so good. And you may find that getting used to playing a groove and a stop to the metronome takes a little while, but don't worry about it. Um, that'll come easily enough, I think. Next, I'm going to up the ante a little bit. We're going to practice again at 100 BPM, but I'm going to turn the metronome down to 25. So we're only going to hear a click on the first beat of every bar. And so you have to be able to, to gauge the time and uh, be able to fill in the gaps, basically. And this will really test your ability to count and keep time accurately. And it might be a little bit advanced for some of you just getting started. And I wasn't sure whether I should put it in this video or not. But actually, I think that failure is a much better teacher than success most of the time. And uh, as long as you go into this with a spirit of if it comes out, it comes out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I think it actually help you develop your sense of time. So I'd like you to go into this meaning to fail and just give it a go and see what happens. And if it doesn't come out right, don't worry about it. Over time, this sort of thing will get easier and easier. So I'm just going to wind it down to 25. And uh, interestingly enough, the fancy schmancy Italian term for that kind of neighborhood of tempos is grave. So that's ominous, isn't it? I think, well, I think it's probably like grave or something, but grave. There you go. I'm going to allow myself to count through four bars to kind of tune in to this very slow clickage and let's see how it goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and two, and two, and three, and four, and three, and two, and three, four, and four. Two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and two, and two, and three, and four, and three, and two, and three, and four. just about made it. Now you've got the hang of the basic stop time, we're going to add a fill. The fill can be, let's just go with the old oh you knucklehead, tardy tuckadi thing, and it's going to help you kind of cue the band back in. So sometimes you don't just want to leave that empty space, but you want to add a sort of driving energy to build back up to your crashing in scenario. So for instance, tardy tuckadi comes back in like that. Okay? So let's play a four bar phrase again. It's pretty obvious you should be able to work this out uh, quite easily once I've shown you. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and two, two, and three, and four, and three, two, and three, and four, and stop. Two, tardy, tardy. One, two, and not less silence. Two, two, and three, and four, and three, and two, and three, and four, and stop. Two, tardy, tardy. Now, very often you might find yourself doing a very, very minor little fill, but again, it can help just cue the band back in. So you might be going stop, two, three, four, one, two, four, and two, two, and three, and four, and three, and two, and three, and four, and stop, two, three, and four, two, and three, and four, two, two, and three, and four, and three, two, and three, and four, and stop, two, three, and four, and 
two, three, four, one, and so on. Finally, let's do a two bar stop, which just means really you have to wait a little bit longer. We're going to fit that into an eight bar phrase where we're playing six bars of groove, stopping on the one of the seventh bar, and then we're going to wait for the rest of two bars to finish. Maybe we'll play a fill back in and we're going to crash in and uh, let's see what happens. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and two. And three and four and three and two and three and four and four two and three and four and five two and three and six and three and four and stop two three four two two three four and three and four and two three and four and three two and three and four and four and two and three and four five two and three and four and six two and three and four and stop Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and three, and three, and four, and four, and three, and four, and five, two, and three, and six, two, and three, and four, and two, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, stop. Again. Oh, ah, that was close. There you go, practice that. You can try the old 25 BPM or whatever the, the click on the one trick or just practice with the metronome playing all the quarter notes. But get yourself used to doing that. And uh, in my next video, I'm gonna put that all together and we're gonna learn how to play a song using some grooves and fills and some stops, counting the bars and the whole thing. It's probably a good idea to subscribe so that you get notified of when that final video appears. Meanwhile, please leave me comments, obviously be free to like this video, but I'm, I'm mostly interested in hearing what you thought about this up to now, whether you watched all the videos and followed them or whether you've just uh, dipped into a few. Let me know what you think. I guess that wraps this one up then. So go away and practice.